Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first webinar uh, for the agency.io. My name's Chris, and I'm the managing director and owner here. We are a social media, digital marketing, and events company. Um, and what we want to do over the next couple of weeks is bring out as many videos, as many webinars as we can to provide information, feedback, tips to as many of our clients and non-clients um, around the world. We understand at the moment it's a tricky time uh, in terms of business and also for professionals. So these videos are just to provide as much information to everyone watching. And hopefully you find it interesting. You can take some things and implement it into your own business. So the topic that we're going to cover today is going to be take your business online now and for the future. And the reason we chose this topic is that because I sent out many, many topics to a lot of our clients and friends in business. And this was one of the ones they wanted me to cover first due to the fact um, that a lot of people now have a lot more time at home. And there's also a lot of businesses that aren't selling online, which could do with selling online now pretty fast. So this is the topic that we're going to be covering for the day. If you do have any questions at all, please send an email to hi at the agency.io and I will reply to as many questions as I can in a timely matter. Um, so yeah, we've got clients all over the world, um, about 40% in the Americas, 40% in, the, in, the, um, in Europe, and then over in Asia and Australasia as well. So what I've done in this uh, webinar is take a little bit of information from all the clients that I've been talking about around the world and also some of the tips that they've been implementing into their business. So this is a mix between what our clients have also been telling us and what we've been implementing into our business businesses ourselves as the agency. We don't just have one, we have a couple of different businesses as well. So yeah, let's dive straight into it. So the first part of today's webinar is going to be about Google My Business. Taking your business online, it's super important that you get your Google My Business page or the area where it is, the profile is correctly set up. If you haven't set one up already, it's super important. Go on now and set it up. It is kind of be, can kind of be a little bit fiddly in the first couple of weeks due to the fact that if you need to um, accept where your location is. It takes about three weeks to go, so to take um, to send out a card. But please get this set up. It is so important to make sure that you have your company online and on Google My Business because at the end of the day, 90% of people use Google to search for certain things. And if you don't have your profile on there, it's going to be very difficult to find you. Um, but also as well, I get asked certain questions, for example, a key center, does necessarily a key center or, or locksmith, do they need to be on Google My Business? And yes, of course, they do need to be on, on Google My Business. And the reason for that as well is because it connects to Google Maps and a lot of people that search on Google, if you're not on there, no one's going to be able to find you. And also if I'm working with a certain company and their profile isn't very good, or they don't have a profile at all, I lose confidence pretty quickly in that company because it shows me that they're outdated as a company if they're not using these free tools that Google have. So yeah, first of all is the setup. Make sure the Google My Business is set up correctly. And there's too many times that people, you know, they'll open a company account, but then they'll just leave the company account. Make sure that the description in the profile is correct and up to date as well. Try not to use 2018, 2019. Do a general description about your business because these words will also be will be able to connect you. If someone's in the search bar searching for, let, let's say, a hair salon in Barcelona, if you have that in the description, it's going to help them find you a lot easier um, than if you just had a complete blank one. And also, if anyone's checking you out, they're going to go through and they're going to see exactly what you are as a company. So this is no, normally... Companies have only put one or two lines on there. Put a correct description about exactly what you do and you'd be surprised how many people actually read that and take into consideration before purchasing a product from you or even bothering of turning up and getting a haircut, for example. Another important thing to do on there as well is the photos. Update the photos that are on Google. Now when people are leaving uh, reviews on Google Maps, for example, a lot of people are leaving photos. So it's a great idea to do that on your profile as well. You can take photos of your staff, photos of inside the, the building or inside of the company, etc. because this is technically another review site for everyone. If they're gonna find you on Google, they've typed in top 10 bars in Barcelona, for example, 
and then they can see there's 10 bars, but one of the companies or one of the bars on Google My Business has loads of photos of the food, of the people in there. They have a correct description as well. They're more likely to go for you compared to a bar that only has one or two photos and no description. Um, and also the times as well. This is something that really, really annoys me personally is when I'm looking online um, and I'm trying to find a restaurant, I'm trying to find uh, a t-shirt shop where I need to get something printed. And when I turn up, the shop is closed, but on Google it says it's open. So it's super essential that you make sure that the times that Google have are the times that you are actually open and closed. Because you'd be surprised if somebody goes to your shop, if somebody goes to your business and it's closed down when Google says it's not. Me personally, I get quite annoyed, um, especially as well when the phone number on Google doesn't work either. So the first tip I could give you, uh, the first recommendation is make sure right now you update your Google My Business. Make sure the information is correct. Make sure the photos are good and make sure you've got a lengthy description as well. And you'd be surprised about how much business or extra business you would get just by doing this correctly. Um, and also another big thing as well on Google that people overlook are the reviews. Now is the best time to be doing all your reviews and go over. Most of the reviews that I have a look online, especially with Google, is not many people actually reply back to the reviews. Um, this is a great time right now. Reply back to all the reviews you've got on Google because you'll be surprised how many people actually go through the reviews. And if you reply to them, it shows your customers or shows your future customers um, that you're actually interested in getting in contact. You're reading the feedback that people are leaving as well. And you're doing something about the errors that could be in there as well. And one great way to get a lot of reviews is send a global email out to your clients or get in contact with your clients. You have to be careful with this, but it's a very good way to get a lot of reviews quite fast. For example, you say, please give us an honest review and we'll give you 10, 20% off your next purchase. But be careful because some people, and I've seen this in the past, they say, if you provide us with a five or four star review, we will provide you with 20% off. Do not do this because it's kind of, bribing the customer into doing it and you could have a big backlash and I have seen this happen before. So the best thing is just send a generic email out saying, hey, you know, if you like our services or if you like our product, or if you've been to our restaurant before, please leave us an honest review. An honest review is so much better than fake five-star reviews. So many companies put loads and loads and loads of five-star reviews on just saying, great, fantastic. They look completely fake and to me, I can see that they are fake reviews. I prefer to see a gradual like decrease, so you've got five star, four star, three star, and two star as well. And as I said before, it's so essential to reply as well to your reviews. And a lot of people freak out when they get one star reviews or two star reviews because they think it's gonna make the business look bad. And yes, if you're getting 10, 20, 30 one star reviews or two star reviews, you need to rethink about what, what you're doing. You know, you might be doing something seriously wrong. But every single company will have their haters. It doesn't matter where you are. Some people is going to get really annoyed with your business and they're going to leave you a one star review. But it's all down to you whether that remains a one star review or and technically you can turn that into a five star review or you can turn that into a positive for other people reading them reviews. For example, if you do get a one star review, never be sarcastic and never be aggressive when replying to the comment. So many times that I've had a look at restaurants or so many times I've had a look at other businesses and someone's left a one or two star review and complained and either the owner or the person replying has gone back extremely hard telling the person that they were wrong. If I was reading that then, if I was reading that one star comment and I'd read the comment from the owner as well, I'd take a step back and I'd lose confidence in the person because if they're treating them with an aggression, they're probably gonna treat me with aggression if I have, an, if, if I have a problem with them as well. So this happens at the agency, it's happened at other our businesses as well, especially our online business, for, you know, every now and then this can happen. So if we ever do get a one star review, you need to show the people who are gonna be looking at that one star review what you are and what you're about as a company. So firstly, I would always start off and be like, you know, I'm extremely sorry that you had a bad experience with us. Here at the agency.io, you know, we strive to make all of our customers happy um, and we're here to fix any issue. Please can I jump on a telephone call with you right now and I'll fix this issue straight away for you. Um, and then we, you know, we'll go above and beyond to make sure that you will be happy as a customer with the agency, for example. 
That's a lot better. If somebody then sees that one star review and sees that reply from yourself saying that, you know, as a company, you're willing to do whatever you can to rectify any issues that have happened in the past, that then gives a lot more confidence in me, um, sorry, to give to the company due to the fact of I know if I then have an issue, they're going to help out. This may not be true all the time. I completely understand that. Uh, that some people might just do the fake reviews. But if I did see replies to one star and two star reviews, apologizing, saying that they were going to try and help, um, and also you know, trying to get in contact with the person, have a phone call to rectify the issue, then I would have a lot more confidence in that company due to the fact I know that everyone's going to have one and two star reviews. So be very, very careful with the review so far. Um, and that's pretty much it for Google My Business. It's not it's kind of a social media in its way because it, uh, it's, a, it's a it's a review site as well. But a lot of people overlook this. So make sure you have the description right. Make sure you have good photos in there and make sure you have reviews. It's never good if you only have like three or four reviews and you've got a 2.2. I was looking personally for a recruitment company recently and I got recommended two recruitment companies. When I went on Google, one of the recruitment companies had a 2.1% um comment rate or the, the reviews for, uh, out of the stars. So when I looked through them, the one and two star reviews were really, really bad and no one had ever commented back to them. And there were a couple of five star reviews, but it outweighed it with the bad ones. And due to the fact that that company neglected the Google reviews and also didn't bother try and do anything, I lost instant confidence in that company and I went to the other one and they lost my business. So yeah, this is something to think about very hard and also it's completely free and you don't have to be techy to do it. You can set this up in 10, 15 minutes and then you can perfect it over an hour. So within one day, you can have comments on there, you can have the right description, you can have better photos and you can have the times uh, that are correct. So when people go to your business, you're actually going to be open. So yeah, that's the first tip that I would give everyone is get on there as well. It's super easy to do. Um, so yeah, just to summarize, Google My Business. First, if you've not set it up, go and set it up straight away. Make sure you pay special attention to the text and the description. Make sure you've got a mixture of photos in there as well. Staff photos is always great. Client photos is always great. Shows there how happy your clients are. Super important. Make sure the times that are on Google My Business are the correct times when you're open. Um, and also the reviews, never overlook the reviews, but make sure you don't make them spammy. Speak to your clients, also friends and family. Friends and family are always there to help as well. You need to build them reviews up. If you've got anything less than a four out of five stars, you seriously need to improve that straight away. And also as well, be careful with the one and two star reviews. Don't take it personal, just pass them straight on reply correctly to them and you'll be surprised that you'll be able to turn them one star reviews into a five star review if you do it correctly. So for the second part of the webinar, we're going to talk about social media and how to get on the right social media platforms and get yourself set up correctly. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you out there, you've already got the company profile set up on one of the social media platforms. Um, but if you haven't, it is essential to get on there. In this day and age, in 2020, every single company should be on social media. It's, it's, in my opinion, there's no really excuse if a company isn't on social media. And if they're not, it shows me that they're outdated um, or they're just not working with the times. So yeah, the first thing, get yourself set up on social media and get yourself set up on the correct platforms and the most important platforms. The most important platforms, obviously, you've got YouTube, but if you've not got YouTube content, don't worry about that at all. Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter would be the main ones. You know, you've got Pinterest as well. Depending on what you do as a company depends on what social media platforms you should be using in, in a sense. Um, and one of the main things I always tell people is make sure you use the same username or the same tag. Sometimes that you'll see a company and they'll have... For example, we'll use um, the agency.io. Then on another one, they'll have the agency Barcelona Marketing. And for each individual social media platform, um, so for Facebook, they'll have a different username. For Instagram, they'll have a different one. For YouTube, have a different one. This is a big mistake. You should try and keep it the same all the time. And if you can't keep it the same across the thing, look for one in between and keep it the same. So if you've got a .io at the end of the name, for example, but on Twitter, you know, they've taken .io, 
try and look for something else, but to keep it similar with what you're already using. Because if somebody goes on Facebook to try and find you and then they use the same username to try and find you on Instagram and they can't find you, it's just a longer process. You want it to be as clean as possible. So always try and keep your usernames the same. I understand it's not always possible, but try as hard as you can to keep them the same across all the different social media platforms you're using because it'll make it a lot easier for people to be able to find your pages. Another tip as well is also be careful on the social media platforms that you're using. It's better to have three social media platforms. And when I'm saying platform, I mean the individual companies. So it's better to have a really good Facebook, a really good Instagram, and a really good Pinterest, for example, instead of having six um, social media platforms or six social media profiles, but only having two or three of them that are really good. For example, personally, I use a lot more Facebook than I do Instagram. So if I'm ever looking for a company, I will click on their Facebook. And what can happen quite a lot is a, is a company will have a very strong Instagram, but a very weak Facebook. But if I don't use Instagram and I go on their Facebook, I'm going to think that company is very small if they've only got 200 followers. Because if I don't use Instagram, I don't know that they might have 20 or 30,000 followers on Instagram. So this is something to bear in mind when setting up your profiles. And when I'm talking about before about the username, you can set the profiles up on the different ones, secure your username. If you're using um, socialmedia.com, let's just invent one um, as a username, but you're not currently using Twitter, you're not currently using Pinterest, what you could do is go on there, make an account with that username so you lock the username down, but you don't necessarily have to share that on your website. I see a lot of time that companies open every single social media profile available. And then when you click on it, they've only got like one subscriber on, on YouTube. It doesn't make sense and it really doesn't look very good, especially if people click on there. Because if somebody only clicks on two of your social media profiles and the two that they click on are very poor and they don't know that you're very good on Instagram or Facebook, then you might have just lost a sale. So hide them away until you've got time to get all your social media platforms or profiles posting constantly and you can grow them all. I personally wouldn't have it on, on the website, but many people may disagree with that, but this is what I do personally and this is what a lot of our clients do as well, is hold off until you've grown it to a certain stage, then add it onto the website because it's a lot better if one of your clients clicks on your Instagram, which is fantastic, um, instead, you know, you don't want them to click on Facebook where you've got one photo and you've got, you know, 100 subscribers or 100 followers. So that would be our tip, first of all, is make sure that you choose the correct uh, social media platforms for your business. Um, setting the bio and the text as well. A lot of people set up the profiles, but they don't end up finishing them because they, they were in a rush before. It's really important. Uh, Facebook is great for this as well, is you can put in so much information about your, you know, your company um, and anything that you pretty much want to put in below your interests, staff, uh, you really want to go in and use all the tools that they're providing for you. And this is not just on Facebook. I'm using Facebook as an example. But if they've given you a tool, if they've given you an area for a description, if they've given you an area to put in a price about your product, use it because you want to be filling in as much information as possible. Because if you're, if somebody's finding you from, from Facebook and not from your website, you want just as much information on your Facebook as you've got pretty much on your website as well. It's going to give you a higher chance of capturing the client. Um, because if I go on a website, if I go on um, sorry, a Facebook profile and I scroll down, there's no information at the bottom. Um, then I've then got to add, add an extra click to go to the website to find that information. You want to make the process as short as possible. And if you can have all the information on there, you're going to benefit from it a lot, a lot better. Also as well, social media is super important about the quality of the photos that you post on there as well. And also the content and anything you do. Don't just post for the sake of it. Don't just think, okay, I'm just going to post this photo, which is not very good image bad text, bad everything else, just for the sake of getting content on there. Spend time in what you put on social media, exactly the same as you would with a dating website as well. On a dating website, you wouldn't just throw up any, any photo just to get something up there and do a quick uh, description. You would take time in planning the photos that you want to use. You take time in planning the description as well, because at the end of the day, it's the end result you want to score, and this is how you're going to get through it. 
Um, and this goes across the whole thing. A lot of people put videos on YouTube and some of the videos are so bad quality, but they just want content on YouTube that in my eyes, it's not a very good idea to, uh, to upload this type of content. Try, I understand that not all businesses will be able to do um, put the fantastic content out there, but just make sure the content you're putting up there is correct. Another tip as well, uh, and this goes back to the same usernames as before, is link all the profiles together. I see it a lot that people don't link the, the, the profiles together. So as you can see on, let, let's use Instagram now as an example, you can put the at sign and then Facebook and then Twitter and then you can have the YouTube. So the followers that you have on one platform, you know, may cross over to the other platform. So then you're gonna be able to target that certain client or future client a lot more than you would if they were just on Facebook. It's a lot better to have someone following you on all your social media profiles than just having on one. And you'd be surprised as well how many people when they go through your Instagram, they will then check out all your other social media as well. I do it regularly with all the companies before buying anything from a company. I will go through because I use social media as a complete review site. Um, to make sure, you know, how are they as a company? Because you'll be surprised at how many people look into, you know, what are your staff doing? Um, you know, how do you treat your staff as well? Do you look like a fun company? Do you look like a serious company? Um, so yeah, this is another thing. Link all the profiles and because you'll be surprised about how many people actually cross check and will follow you on your other profiles as well. And one of the biggest things I can say right now in terms of social media, is social media is ever changing. It changes all the time. The algorithms are changing. Every single platform is completely different than the other. Um, so gain a good understanding of social media. And, and it's not just a case of posting and hope for the best. And the way I describe this to a lot of my clients as well is it's kind of like going to the gym. You can go to the best gym in the world, but if you're not eating right and you're not doing the correct exercises, you're not going to get the same goal or you're not going to get to the goal that you want to do. You've got to study the algorithms. You've got to study how the platform works. And this goes down to hashtags. This goes down to, um, to locations as well. There's so many things that you can do online. And sometimes it's such a small thing that actually gets you a lot better results. So now that you're stuck at home for the next couple of weeks, um, get on the internet and start learning about the different social media platforms. I find it incredibly interesting, um, all the different algorithm, algorithms and how they work, um, but it's not easy. And I understand that you need to research, um, but there's so much free content out there as well. And what I would recommend is always use three different types of sources, um, because there's a lot of people out there who do push uh, their social media channels, their influencers, and a lot of other people, but they don't tell you the full story behind. They'll give you a strategy to grow when in reality they're not telling you that they also know another five people who own 100 accounts that are helping each other grow. So always use three different sources when studying any different platform. And by three different sources, I mean three different people or three different you know videos, different types to gain different experiences and different information from, from different sites. Um, yeah, and also just be careful about what you're listening to and be up to date as well. If you're doing any courses now from 2018, 2019, they are out of date. Some things still may be applicable in terms of posting, but a lot of it uh, will, will have changed. For example, hashtags on Instagram, it used to be 27 hashtags. Two, three months ago, they made a big update and it's now only nine. So if you're doing courses from 2019, this is going to put your, your social media in jeopardy because you're not exactly, you're not staying with the times. Um, and the, the algorithms are ever changing. The algorithms change all the time depending on which platform. So yeah, if you gain a better understanding, you're going to get more money for your time, really, when you're posting online. And you don't have to waste hours and hours and hours on social media. 100% understand that most of these people, hopefully, um, on the webinar now, are professionals and business people, you, you know, you know what a 12, 16 hour day sometimes does and you just don't have the energy to be posting when you get home as well. But you don't have to waste so much time on, on social media. You don't have to spend so much time. And there's certain things that you can do in terms of plan your posts for the week ahead or plan your, plan your posts for two weeks ahead as well. You know, sit down on a Monday or on a Friday, pick four or five photos that you want to post for the following week, do the, uh, 
do the caption correctly, think about the caption, think about the hashtags. And this is something that I've personally done many times in the past, um, is I rush a post. So on social media, I'll just put a photo there, I'll write a quick caption, and I'll find some quick hashtags and boom, send it off. It's just the worst thing that you can do. If you post it with time and you think about the hashtags, you're gonna get a lot more engagement because they're gonna connect the hashtags with the post. Um, and there's so many tools out there that you can use as well. There's Hootsuite um, that you can schedule your posts. So all you need to do is you just add it into the, the online tool. If you type them into Google, you'll find endless tools where you can use this. You'll put your post in, add your caption, add your hashtags, and then you set the timer, and then they will post on your social media for you. So then instead of spending an hour, two hours a day on your social media, uh, which you might have been doing in the past, now you know you can cut that down to maybe only two hours a week and you can set it for all your different social media platforms. So yeah, that's, you don't need to spend too long on there. Um, but it is a great idea to schedule your posts and you will see an increase as well in engagement as well. So yeah, to be honest, the, the Google side and the social media side, it's just showing the world who you are. It's like a massive review site for everyone. And you just want the biggest footprint online as possible. Um, and the more places that you are online, the more chance you're going to be seen, the more money you're going to make, or the more exposure as well. And it's all completely free. Everything that I've just explained there is completely free. Even the tools, you can download the tools for free as well. And you don't have to be a tech genius to, to understand this. Um, you know, you may, may need to do a, a couple of courses, have a look online in YouTube, for example, how to set up Google My Business, but you can all do it dependent. It doesn't, you don't need to have a computer course to be doing this and it's completely free. And if you do it correctly, you will see an increase in engagement. So just to summarize what we've been speaking about there. So social media, set up your social media, choose the platforms wisely, depending on which ones you're gonna spend the most time on and build. Set your bio, text, photos, etc. all the information, set it correctly and spend time on doing that as well across all the individual platforms. Link your profiles as well. Link all your social media profiles together using the same username um, and then you can share your followers across the different profiles. Gain an understanding of um, Instagram as well, Facebook, YouTube, do a couple of courses online. You can find everything free, there's stuff on YouTube, there's blogs, and you'd be surprised. With just a little bit more understanding, you're going to, you're going to get a lot more engagement um, out of when you're posting. And you'll keep up to date as well with the algorithm changes. You don't need to waste hours and hours and hours. You, there's so many tools, schedule your posts, um, and you can find all that on Google. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's, it's absolutely free. So I would jump on and get all that done now. So for the next part of the webinar, I'm gonna teach you a couple of little tricks um, and also tips about how you can get on page one of Google by not doing that much really. Um, and one of this is, it's not getting your actual website um, on page one, it's getting the link and your description for your website on page one as well. Um, so if you type into Google now, uh, top 10 gyms in, in France, for example, you'll, you'll see a lot of blogs and websites that are reposting them on there. Uh, it might be the top 10, it might be the best restaurant, it might be restaurants near me as well. You know, you've got TripAdvisor who are normally on page one, you've got Glassdoor, you've got Rocket Tech, and you've also got Clutch as well. So your main aim on a website, you know, if you're doing SEO, et cetera, is you wanna be on page one so everyone can see you because most people don't really go past page two or three at the later. If you're on page five, literally no one's gonna be seeing your website. So what you can do is get your website onto their websites. And you'd be surprised about how many websites and blogs as well, never, over, uh, never overestimate blogs, underestimate, sorry, blogs, is that you can get all your company details on there for absolutely free without doing anything at all. Um, you know, TripAdvisor is a main one, I understand that, you know, for the tourism, but there's a lot of other ones where people are doing blogs about the top 10 digital marketing companies in Barcelona, the top 10 um, web designers, for example, in the UK. And you can get on there and it doesn't really cost anything. You can sometimes have a paid membership, but the free membership is normally just as good. So go on there, whatever business you're in, whatever professionality you're in, type into Google and um, best 
web designers near me and get yourself on as many of them pages. I would open pages from the first, from number one, two, and three. Um, on Google and do it for different keywords as well. Type in different sentences and get your company profile on these websites. You'll be surprised about how much traffic these main websites get. And if you're on them websites, you're gonna get a lot more traffic to you as well. But not only that, this actually helps your website out with SEO. Because if you've got your website link um, connected to these big websites, Google are gonna see that. And it, as long as they have the backlink connected, um, then you're actually going to raise an SEO on your on your own website as well, which is going to push you up the pages on Google. So you're hitting it from two ways. One, you're getting the company on page one, and also you're helping out your website as well. And as I said, most of these are completely free. I actually did one this week uh, with the agency, and that was with Clutch.co. I found it on there. I've never seen the website before, but I found it on there. Um, and then I set all the company details up, put the correct description in, etc. the prices, the staff. And, and then I got a phone call from the main company asking to, you know, to see if I wanted to upgrade. So I didn't pay for the main membership, but I upgraded it. So now if you type in, uh, you know, we're in the top 10 marketing companies in Barcelona, digital marketing companies in Barcelona, and it's completely free. So if anyone types that in in Google, we're going to be there. So we've got more chance of getting traffic to the website and at the end of the day, more chance of gaining um, more revenue. Because that's what everyone, what everyone wants to be on the top pages on, on Google if this is for your website. And this is one way to do it. And you don't need to be techie either. It's pretty much exactly the same as setting a Google profile up. And it's exactly the same as setting a social media profile. So go through now. You want to try and get yourself on 10, 20, as many as you possibly can. Get yourself on every possible free website. This is free SEO. It's going to help your website. And it's going to be, let you be in more places at once on the internet. Um, so that's going to gain more traffic and eventually more revenue for the company as well. So yeah, to summarize, super important, get on there, get on page one, two, and three, search top 10 restaurants in Barcelona, search best uh, cooking courses near me, search whatever you want on Google, open them pages up and get your profile, get your company in to as many pages as possible. So now it's time to move on to products that you can actually start putting online as well. And as long as you've done the last three things that I've just spoken about, about the Google My Business, social media, um, and the websites as well, you're gonna have a solid footprint um, across the internet. So if people are checking you out, they're gonna find a lot of information about the company and it's gonna put them at ease as well. Because if you don't have any information at all on, online, but you're trying to sell to a customer and they try to do some back uh, research, get some feedback, some reviews, and there's nothing on there, they're going to find it a little bit strange um, and they're probably not going to go with your company. So some of these ideas um, are from our clients. Some of the ideas are what we've been implementing in our businesses as well. And some have just been what, what I've been reading online as well, what some companies have been doing and how to take their business online or how to take their products. And one of the biggest industries to be hit so far is the bar and restaurant as well, um, due to the fact that everywhere is closed. So one of the things that I've been having a look at is a lot of people actually doing deliveries but a little bit of a difference. Instead of just doing the delivery by just taking the food home, they've actually been taking the whole kind of atmosphere round. Um, I know a company that have been delivering candles uh, with their food, plates and forks, um, but proper plates and forks, maybe a bunch of flowers in the middle. And this is only maybe for their main customers, but it's a little bit different. So people are feeling like they're having a night out, but they're at home. I thought this was a great idea and they're doing it at exactly the same cost as a normal takeaway, but you get to set up the table as if you are actually out having a dinner. Courses as well. Courses, this goes for every single company. If you're a kitchen, you know, you can be doing a chef course, you name it. You can be putting that online and charging money for it. If somebody goes to your restaurant or your bar all the time and they know that your food's fantastic, what better to have a course from the chef who has actually been cooking that because they're going to have confidence in that course straight away due to the fact that they've been eating the food from that person for a while. Um, and also as well, this is one that I didn't think would actually work, but it has uh, proven me wrong, is memorabilia and branded stuff from the restaurants and bars. T-shirts, cups, you name it. I, I really didn't believe this would work, but a lot of people are buying stuff. Um, because if somebody goes to a bar and have a local and they go all the time, um, People feel attached to that bar, so they may want a t-shirt, they may want a cup at home. Um, I personally wouldn't do it, but it is actually a business that's making quite a little bit of money from, um, 
from certain people who are doing it in, in the industry. Another one which is going to be hit quite hard is beauty. Uh, this could be spas, this could be hair salons, you name it, it could be anything else. And one of the main, main things that you can put online is again your courses, um, you know, you can put whatever. A lot of places inside these beauty, um, they sell online, they're, sorry, they sell products. So you might have hair products that you can put online as well and try and sell them during this time. But the main thing that I would say here would be experiences as well. You could have like a Hindu experience, uh, you name it. You could put the experience together. You could make um, contact with, an, for example, if you're a hair salon, make contact with a spa. And then what you could do is come together um, and kind of create an experience where they can go and get their hair done or go to the spa first, then come back and get their hair done. They can get their nails, their hair and this, and you can sell the packs. And once you can do that, then you can start selling it on Groupon, selling it on different websites as well. So you could actually have, you know, many people signing up online for an experience. And this is going to raise your revenue in the future as well. Because if you keep this going and people keep using it for birthdays, people keep using it for weddings, people keep using it for anything, you're going to make more money. And if it's online, it's a lot easier to control if somebody's just coming into the shop. Another one that's been hit is sporting. And this could be gyms, swimming pools, you name it. One of the main things that I've been seeing, and this is actually something that's already existed, but I do think it's a great idea, is a virtual live trainer as well. There are a lot of people living out in the mountains now. There's a lot of people who are scared to go out. Some people might be overweight and they just don't want to go to the gyms. These live virtual trainers, it's pretty much a one-on-one -on -one streaming, but you pay for the live personal trainer. They, they're going to be in the gym or they're going to be at home. And then you're actually interacting with each other. And it's a lot better than just doing um, a YouTube video and the live streamings as well of the main classes. This is what a lot of gyms I've seen more in America than the rest of the world but a lot of them, they'll stream their live Zumba class in the gym. But anyone who's at home will also be streaming live in so the, so, the, so the teacher can speak to each individual one as well. It might not be the same as a normal gym membership, but then you're going to actually, if you've got a, a gym in the middle of Paris, let's say, you could actually have a lot more clients because you could be having someone who's at the other side of the country doing one of your Zumba classes because they like you as a teacher and you can grow your business and revenue on there and all you need to do is stream live and set that up there. But there are a lot of, there are pros and cons to selling stuff online. Um, some of the pros are, you know, you get a bigger profit margin, you don't have to, you know, have a shop front, for example. Um, so the profit that you're gonna be getting is bigger. You're gonna get a lot wider reach as well. You know, if you're sending deliveries, you can send deliveries to the other side of the UK, for example, instead of just being in one area. The downsides of putting it on as well is the setup. The setup sometimes can be a little bit difficult. You know, you might have to get a Shopify website. Google shopping also can be very, very difficult to set up. So these could be some of the cons, but you can do courses. There's so much information out there to help you set it up. And if not, you can hire a freelance, you can hire a company and they'll set it up for you. And then also make sure you get the right staffing. Um, that make sure you have someone who's in control of what's being sold online. Make sure someone's in control of the orders coming in. There's nothing worse than buying something from a company, having, and then somebody forgetting, then seven days later, someone messaging you saying, oh, sorry, we forgot about the order. It's gonna make your company look bad, and you could get some bad reviews on that as well. So make sure, if you are selling anything online, you are making the changeover, that you've got someone who's specifically on it checking daily. And another big uh, tip that we would give you as well, and a lot of our clients that are doing this are the ones who are sustainable during uh, the coronavirus lockdown. And this is SaaS. So this is trying to get everything on subscription based. If things are subscription based, you're going to know how much money you're going to earn that month, give or take with the rebills. So you're, for example, if you're earning 10,000 euros on the subscriptions, you know for the following month, if your profit margin is 30%, you're gonna have more or less 30% profit, which you can then plan into different marketing budgets. You might wanna uh, you know, pay for a big PR or something like that. But if you don't have a subscription base, you're not gonna be 100% sure. And you're not gonna know what the sales are gonna be for next month. And this is something that's really impacted um, some of our customers, is the fact that they weren't on subscription based, so now that everyone's in the coronavirus lockdown, well, in most of the places around the world, uh, they're not getting any revenue in. The revenue's completely stopped. Whereas if they're on a subscription based, that you know they would have continued over. But this is, you may lose a little bit on the subscription base. You need to make it a little bit cheaper, but it may be every two weeks. It may be every one month. And if you make it cheap enough, like a lot of companies make it 10 euros, 15 euros, for example, you've got um, 
you've got Amazon Prime, you've got Netflix. Uh, they're so cheap in terms of the subscription that most people don't even bother canceling them. For the sake of 10 euros, you may as well just keep it on there. And one great example of this is a company um, who started doing subscription based on razors. Uh, on razors for men or on razors for women. And I think it was like five to 10 euros or something like that and they dropped razors off at your house. This guy is a multi, multi-millionaire now uh, that he did that. And it's such a simple thing, but due to the fact it's so cheap, no one ever ends up canceling it. Um, so yeah, I would strongly recommend getting the subscription base because then you can plan for the future and you're gonna know more or less how much money you've got coming in for that month. And also you can plan accordingly with all your sales. Um, sorry, packaging and etc. You know that next Monday you're going to have to send 10 packages to this place apart from just getting a deal the night before and then rushing and then sending it off. Um, and another thing I would say as well is when moving anything online is keep it simple. Um, don't be adding endless products. Don't be adding like 40, 50 products. It's just going to confuse people, especially if you're going to be new and selling stuff online. Try to keep it to three to nine tops three to nine products or three to nine services that all go into each other um, because this, the less products that you have and the simpler you make it, you're gonna sell more. And also it's gonna make it easier in terms of the logistics wise. If you have to be packaging, you're trying to sell 50, 60 different uh, products or services within the, as soon as you get online, it's just gonna cause more havoc for yourself. Keep it simple, choose the best ones, sell them correctly, sell them at a good price, um, and then it'll be a lot more easier for you and a lot more easier to track as well and control. Another thing that you have to be careful of as well is user experience on your website. Um, you know, if you've got that far so far, you've made the Shopify um, or you've made your website, try and make the start to finish or as soon as the person gets on the website from when they buy as short as they can. You don't want somebody to be able, you know, they don't want to have like eight clicks before they're able to buy. So keep it short to three or four clicks. You get the product, you click the product, you click buy now, boom, you're straight in. If you go through too many information pages or you need to come out, you need to go back in, your sales will drop drastically. Um, and this is after five clicks. Normally the sales drop very, very um, sharp as soon as you have to go past because people get bored. People won't even wait for a, for a website to load between five and 10 seconds nowadays. So yeah, make sure that the user experience on the website is short as possible because you will get more sales from there. So yeah, just to sum up in terms of what I've just been speaking about there is this give you a couple of little different ideas to implement um, or how you can sell stuff online. Um, and also how to do it in a way, you know, when you go onto a website, make it as short as possible. Uh, the pros and cons online, you can make a lot of money online as well. So if you implement things now while you've got the time, you might find that, you know, in the future, you can actually make a lot more profit and you're going to get a lot more uh, customers through the door as well. And also you're going to have a wider reach as well. So instead of just being limited to your certain area, you might, you know, you can go global eventually and start selling it there. Subscription based is the main thing that I can tell you to take away from this. It's super important. If you have a subscription based, it will make easy, uh, life a lot easier for control and also bring in the revenue. So yes, yeah, thank you for, for tuning in. Um, it's going to be, well, this has been my first webinar. So hopefully you've enjoyed it and you found the information uh, that I passed across. Please, if you do have any more questions, let me know at hi at the agency .io. Everyone, please stay safe as well. I understand that uh, everyone, most people are stuck inside now. Please stay inside because it is um, a serious situation as well. I will be back next Tuesday at five o'clock with another webinar, and that's going to be why it's so essential to be on social media right now in this moment. So thank you for everyone for, for tuning in. I really appreciate this and hopefully you have found uh, some things um, informational and you're going to implement into your business. And please let me know what you think. Thank you for everyone. Bye for now.